really standing rub in the back of your shoe. This is Tom Bernanke and I'm gonna show you how to get it to stop rubbing in your rain boots, in your boots, or in the regular shoes. Don't have Achilles tendon pain, don't have back of the heel pain. I'm gonna show you how to use stuff that you have at home right now to get this feeling better and we're starting right now with the top 20 tips. So you notice I threw in the little kid boot because I have a lot of kids and when you're giving this video a thumbs down, just think about a man just trying to make videos about Achilles tendon rubbing to help his children get through school. Think about that, think about that. But on a serious note, let us know what types of shoes. Is it rain boots? Is it cute boots? Is it high heels that are causing the back of your heel to rub? Let us know, we're always interested. So post down in the comments and let us know which tip worked. So what happens is you can get blisters, you can get Achilles tendonitis, you can get spurs on the back of your heels. So if you do have a problem or a swollen back of the heel, this is our swollen back of the heel guide. We're gonna show you how to fix the back of your heel problems. So tip number one, you want to get a good fitting shoe. So a lot of people come into clinic every day and their shoes do not fit properly. No matter what tips you do, if your shoe does not fit properly, it's your biggest problem. So we came up with a guide right up here, how to get you to fit your shoe properly at home for when you order shoes online or for when you go into the store and there's nobody to help you. So number one, you have swollen feet. They get more swollen during the day and they can rise half a shoe size to a full shoe size. You wanna measure it after your feet are already swollen. Number two, you wanna make sure you're wearing thicker socks. You don't wanna measure your shoe while you're barefoot because you're gonna be wearing socks and then thicker socks or maybe even winter socks at a certain point and your shoes won't fit all of a sudden if they're too small. Number three, not everybody's feet are the same size. You wanna go with the bigger shoe, trust me on this one. Number four, you're probably gonna put stuff like orthotics or heel lifts eventually in your shoe. Go up half a shoe size, it's not a big deal. It's better to be a little bit too big than way too small. That's a big mistake for you. So keep that in mind and watch that video that we recommend. Tip number two, you wanna get some insoles. So simply getting an insole in here, number one, it will lift your heel a little bit. So I've had people with blisters, with wounds, simply getting a little bit of a lifted insole right away, one second, their heel pain is gone. This is people with lifelong pain. Orthotics make all the difference. Let me show you something about orthotics too. Watch this. Every time you step, your foot turns out right here. That means the back of your heel rubs like this every time you walk. See how it's moving right here? With an orthotic, look it. It's not bending, whereas right here in a regular shoe, it's bending and that heel's rubbing. So you don't need expensive custom orthotics. I'm talking like 20 bucks or less. Check the links down there for our recommended shoes and our recommended insoles. By the way, top shoes for 2020 and 2021, great shoes, running shoes if you need them. Down in the show notes, check out the Michigan Foot Doctors website. We've got you covered for best shoes 2020, 2021, and best orthotics for pretty much no cost. Tip number three, go with socks that protect your heel. So stockings, thin socks, Wear thicker socks, double up on socks right there that will fix your whole problem. Just go with a good pair of socks. There's lots of great compression socks. So running compression socks, again, down in the show notes, we list these for you. We've done all the searching, we've got you covered. Number four, gel pads like this. Look at, these go right on your heel like this. You just put them on, your heel slips into them this will cover your heel. If you're in a high heel, that's a perfect solution. These are like 50 cents maybe. Just buy like a 20 pack of them. Anytime you're going to a uh, business dinner, whatever, in your high heels or your boots, just wear these, easy solution. If that does not work, check this out, duct tape. I love duct tape. It, come, it even comes in flesh color now. If you go on Google, you can buy duct tape, matches your skin tone and nobody will know. So you just rip a piece off, stick it on the back of your heel, instant solution. That doesn't work, get some athletic tape. Look at that. This is hockey tape or athletic tape, whatever you wanna call it. Just rip a piece off, stick it on the back of your heel. If that doesn't work, 
electrical tape. Look at how well cushioned that is. That will stick to the back of your heel. Just stick that on there. Just make sure you clean off the back of your heel with some soap or some alcohol, wash the back of your heel and it will stick. I think that's like three or four tips right there. I've lost count already. KT tape. KT tape's great, but it's more expensive and most people don't have it around the house. So if you want, order KT tape online. It can do the same thing for the back of your heel, but tape is just as good. Everybody's got duct tape. Paper tape's great too if you have paper tape. Moisturize. Grab some Vaseline, grab a scoop, rub it against the back of your heel. Your heel's gonna move a lot easier and there's gonna be less friction, less rubbing, especially if you're running a marathon or a 5K, just do that. Your heel won't rub. If you have deodorant, just grab some deodorant, rub it on the back of your heel. So check this out right here. Rub it on the back of your heel or your Achilles tendon, instant decrease in friction. I love Burt's beeswax too. So waxes are a little bit stronger than deodorant. If you have some wax, get some wax. That works perfect. Do you have a Band-Aid at home? Just open up the Band-Aid, stick it on the back of your heel. Easy, cheap fix. But personally, why not just use the tape? The tape sticks better than a Band-Aid does, especially if you don't have a cut. But if you have a cut, use the Band-Aid. Then you can even put tape over it to make it stronger. That's a double tip. We're on to about number 15. Break in your shoe. So if you get this type of shoe or this type of shoe, so right here, don't wear it to your formal event for the first time you wear it. Don't make your first day like a 12 hour wearing event. You can wear this around the house for like 10, 15 minutes at a time to loosen it up. As you move in it, it will expand by about five to 10%. Also, here's a pro tip. You can let other materials do the stretching for you. So what happens is there's expensive shoe stretchers and I see a lot of patients using shoe stretchers. You don't have to spend $50 on a shoe stretcher. Basically, there's two principles. You wanna moisten it a little bit. So finer materials like this, there's special oils and materials you can put on that come with these stretchers but really they're not a whole lot different than something like this. But basically stretching oils, they're available online with a shoe stretcher. If you have like a $600 shoe, play it safe and get one of those special solutions, but realistically moisturize a little bit. Or number two, get some water, moisten some newspaper. Get all the water out of there so it's not dripping gobs of water into your shoe, just so it's a little bit damp. And then stuff it into your shoe let it sit overnight. This is kind of like those kids who get a brand new baseball glove and just put some oil on the inside of the baseball glove and a baseball and put an elastic around it. Damp towels, stick it in there. There's some other tricks that I read online. You can put this shoe in a washing machine. I don't recommend it. That's a terrible idea. That's gonna ruin this shoe. But number two, they say you can grab ice in a bag and stuff it in there because that dampness will make the shoe expand. I don't recommend that either. Third thing is you can grab a hair dryer and blow on it and then walk around for like 10, 20, 30 seconds and that heel will stretch. That works really well. So use the hair dryer to stretch out your heel. That can work great, but be careful for finer materials, it can ruin the material. This is the sped up version of how to fit your foot at home. A regular piece of paper doesn't work for me, so I'm gonna use a piece of cardboard. Just because the piece of paper is a little too small, unless you go diagonally for some people. Put all your weight on the floor because your foot flattens even more. You can see I'm resting on my other foot here, so I probably should stand on it a little bit more and the foot would be just a little bit wider just a little bit. So I give it a little bit of extra juice. You always wanna be safe when ordering online. Your foot gets just a little bit wider during the day and just a little bit longer. And remember, everybody makes slightly different shoes, so it's always better to go a little bit bigger. So draw out your foot, measure it. It should be in inches if you're in America. Other countries, such as Europe, may use different sizing measurements, especially if you're in India or Europe, and hello to our visitors from those countries. So give it a little bit of extra. See how I gave it a little bit of extra? Then go to a place like Zappos.com. They have great calculators, also a great shoe store. Check the links below for our favorite links to our favorite Zappos shoes but measure it, use their guides, and you plug in your numbers for width and length, and you use the sizing charts, and you're in great shape with the numbers we gave you. Let us know if that helped, and leave a comment.